Our preview of every team going to the World Cup is continuing, and we are continuing with Group E and the Pot 2 team in Group E, Germany. <gasps> Germany's in Pot 2. I know, very unlucky for Spain, Japan, and Costa Rica because they have to contend with essentially two global heavyweights, and Germany qualified like a global heavyweight. In European qualification, Germany was required to play 10 matches. Germany won nine of those matches, only losing, surprisingly, at home against North Macedonia. But of course, Italy knows a little something about that. North Macedonia were a surprise second in the group that did eventually lose in qualifying playoffs. But Germany grabbed the top spot, which is automatic qualification. They also pounded the back of the net. They scored 36 goals in 10 games, and it was distributed evenly. Gnabry, Gundogan, and Werner had five goals apiece. Even and Leroy Sané had four goals. Then they only allowed four goals in all of qualifying, half of them being to North Macedonia in that fourth game. And perhaps it shouldn't be a surprise that Germany was able to qualify so easily. After all, they have been to the second most World Cups in the history of ever, ever. Ever. Germany has never failed to qualify for the World Cup. They've attended 19 of the 21 tournaments. They decided not to go and ship to Uruguay in 1930, and they were banned from entering in 1950. Every other tournament they have attempted to qualify for and successfully qualified for. As is probably not a surprise, Germany, which inherited West Germany's competitive statistics, won four World Cup championships, two as a united Germany in 1990, and of course in 2014 recent living memory. If 1990 is recent living memory for you, I'm sorry to do this to you, but I wasn't born. The stats for Germany at the World Cup actually get even crazier because Germany, having been to 19 World Cups, has actually been to the semifinals or better in 13 of them. This means if you include the other two World Cups that they did not participate in, they've still made the semifinals at 13 of 21 World Cups, which I'm not an expert mathematician, is over 50%. 68% of the time. To the semifinals, the final four, the best four teams in the world. Germany's won 67 matches at the World Cup. Only world-class teams have ever played 67 matches at a World Cup. That's a small club to begin with. And all of this came together for a run between 2002 and 2014, where Germany made the semifinals for four consecutive World Cups. Now they made the final twice and of course won one of those, but in the last World Cup, the story was different. And that's the point of the story. And that story was Germany losing in the first round of the World Cup for the second time. Ever. The last one was 1938 when they lost in the first round. If you scroll through the rest of this, you will not see another first round exit until the group stage in 2018. So what the heck happened? Well, South Korea happened very memorably in the last match, scored two goals in stoppage time to stun the world and knock Germany out of the World Cup. But also it's worth remembering the ever consistent Mexican national team beat Germany in the opening match. Germany actually beat Sweden who ended up topping the group and sometimes things are just weird like that. But Germany only scored two goals in the entire World Cup in three matches, which considering the rate they normally score and the rate of their normal success is very surprising. These recent struggles for Germany have also plagued their performances in more recent continental competitions. This is the worst we've seen Germany look in a very long time. We'll start with the Euros, the European Championships, which happened last year. This is a tournament in which Germany has also relatively struggled. Germany are three-time European champions. They are perpetual top-level competitors in the event, and they ended up petering out in the round of 16. They were put in the group of death with France and Portugal. They found a win against Portugal, but they were unable to beat Hungary, and they lost to Portugal. In fact, against Hungary, Leon Goretzka had to score in the 84th minute, or Germany would have been grouped in the Euros as well. Which, if you're a fan of statistical anomalies, has actually happened three times in much less history than the World Cup has had, so... Maybe they're just a little worse than the Euros, who knows? But after this lesson in the art of survival, Germany went on the road to England and lost 2-0 in what was an exorcism for the English. And as much as some people don't care about the Nations League, Germany's form did carry over there. They got seven points from six matches in Nations League A, ended with a 3-3 firecracker of a draw at Wembley Stadium against England, who ended up going down. But Germany once again struggled with Hungary and finished well behind Italy, who's not going to the World Cup. All of this is to say Germany is is in trouble with the current generation that it has. Hasn't been able to produce the same type of results it's become accustomed to over the last forever. And that's where the injection of new blood is important. And that new blood is a player named Jamal Musiala, who is my player to watch 
on Germany. Now, he is not, at this point, the best player on Germany. Honestly, it's probably a short Kimmich. He can play a little bit of everything everywhere, and he's going to be great at this World Cup, very likely. But Jamal Musiala is 19 years old, and he was Germany's youngest ever player at a major tournament in the Euros last year. Just being young is not why he's here. He's also very good. He plays on Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga. He's played 11 matches as of the time of this recording. He has seven goals and four assists. For those uneducated in the world of soccer and football, that's a lot. And he's not just good, he's confident, and he's He's incredibly versatile. He can play across the front five or six positions in a team, depending on your tactic, which means despite his age, he has found his way into the German team 17 times. He is still a teenager. If you're thinking, where can I see this Jamal Musiala fella? How can I get to him? Well, I have great news for you. I will be doing a live watch along of every match at the World Cup, and that is on Twitch. The link is down in the description, I promise. It's not so scary. I'll be there. No mustache guaranteed. Musiala is at the front of a whole new generation of German players just starting to matriculate in the national team. And he is also supporting a cast of players that are starting to come into their own. Kai Havertz, Timo Werner with renewed confidence, Leroy Zane with renewed confidence. Gone are the days of Muller and company, even though he's somehow still on this team too. So how does the formation accommodate? everybody. Well, one can't be too sure with the manager Hansi Flick, but in the last two Nations League matches, Germany did line up in a 4-2-3-1. The versatility of the front line of Germany allows a lot of different players to occupy those four spots up front, and perhaps interchange is part of positional play. You go here, I take your spot, so on and so forth. I mean, goodness, Gnabry, Sané, Muller, Havertz, Musiala, all playing at a world-class level across the board in the top European leagues, and almost all of them can occupy the vast majority of those front four positions. Sané and Gnabry are more married to the outside too, but even then they can switch back and forth from the, the, the wings. But 4 2 3 one's not the only option though. In the group of death, Germany did employ a 5-2-3. And that you get the five at the back with two wingbacks that are pushed up the side. You get your front three players that were inverted, kind of in a triangle. And those fullbacks were a real problem. Robin Goosens and Yeshua Kimmich were given free license to roam and make plays. And up until the round of 16, they'd really been captivating different tactical think tanks. Is that the right word? Those Twitter accounts that track movement and stuff. They were enamored with the way that Germany was playing with fullbacks, so don't be surprised if they have that in their bag going to this World Cup. Gundogan, Kroos, and Goretzka make sure the midfield's going to be fine, even if Kimmich is featuring as a, a wingback instead. Antonio Rudiger's resurgent and seems to be at his best ever, and Niklas Sula is still a great option with Schlotterbeck there as well. So there's no huge hole in the defense, and of course Manuel Neuer is the goalkeeper. It's a roster all in all that's very similar to their main rival in Group E. That would be Spain. A roster that is full of players that play at some of the biggest clubs in the world, full of world-class talent, but seems to lack a cutting edge that it so desperately needs. So is Germany one of the favorites? They always are. But in this instance, are they in that top elite group that should be able to go win the World Cup? I don't think so. I think they fit firmly in the second tier with Spain. I do, however, think that Germany will win the group ahead of Spain. I'm a little bit more impressed with their full collection of talent than I am with Spain's, and I am enamored with Hansi Flick. I've always thought he was a great manager, and he will have something cooked up. It's a question between talent and form, and both Spain and Germany are going to have to answer that question at this World Cup. So Germany to win the group, right? Well, it will be uncomfortable. I mentioned this in the previous video about Spain, but I think Costa Rica and Japan can give both of these teams a real problem unless Germany and Spain can find a way to dominate more than they have been able to in the past, at least in the past three years. If either team, Spain or Germany, gets out of this group without a blemish, I would be very surprised. I think we'll likely see something more similar to the group of death Germany was in in the Euros, where you have a lot of draws across the board and one or two wins and one or two goals could make all the difference. But I said it a third time, I'm locking it in, Germany's going to win the group. Are they going to win the whole tournament? No, I don't think so. But you can never count a team out that has as much talent as Germany. If they figure it out, they can win. That is not likely. If you want to keep rolling on this binge, we've got a playlist that's clearly already made it all the way to Group E, previewing every team going to the World Cup. You can check out that playlist right here and just waste away the day. It is a fabulous way to go. You don't have to go anywhere, unless it's your lunch break, then maybe you do.